I think it was huge. I mean, knew it was coming into a big game, and um, you know, kids have been fighting hard, had to face a lot of adversity, and continue to battle through it, and finally found a way to win, and uh, which is huge, especially at this point in the year. Um, like I said before, not much wiggle room, and so um, now we got to build off that and uh, make sure that uh, you know all the positive things that went throughout that game we need to continue to build on and then correct those mistakes uh, that are, that'll eventually get you beat and that's something that we got to continue to do so excited about uh, getting a win um, but now it's we got to enjoy that for about 24 hours now it's on to the next opponent and getting cranked up ready for uh, Southern Miss. Hey, you talked about some of those mistakes obviously there were some penalties at times that seemed like they were pretty costly. Is there anything you're looking at in terms of just addressing that? Yeah. Um, you know, we just, again, got to play smart. You can't uh, get teams one uh, opportunities. I think uh, one drive, they had 26 play drive. Um, I think that 12 plays that were goal to go, goal to go. Um, defense did a great job of uh, keeping them out and holding them to three. That's, that's a, a huge drive in the game. There was multiple drives like that in the game to where uh, could have been the difference between us winning and losing. And, um, you know, there were some uh, PIs and, and personal fouls in there that, that gave them extra opportunities, which you can't allow. And you can't leave it up to the officials uh, in order to let them call it. So um, those are the little things we have to do much better. Um, and it's, uh, like I said, those, those, those plays are selfish. Pre and post play penalties are selfish. And that, that puts yourself before the team. And that's something. Um, you know, and I can't really comment on how I felt about some of them, but at the end of the day, they, they were called. Um, the good news is, is we responded and uh, found a way to, uh, you know, keep them out of the end zone. You mentioned Hutchins Gannon Jr. go back and maybe work with some of that stuff. Did you, did you do that? And what did you see? What's that? Did you look at the film after, uh, you know, to look back at some of those penalties and see what you saw? Oh yeah, I, I watch the penalties weekly for sure, and uh, you know we got to learn off of them. And again, I can't comment on on some of that uh, rules wise, but uh, um, it is what it is. Again, you can't you can't allow uh, you know can't allow officials to to be able to make calls. You got to make sure you're smart, you're disciplined, um, you're playing within the team. Uh, get a huge stop and celebrate with your teammates, uh, and make sure uh, you know. We get the ball back. That's the biggest thing. But again, um, got to be much smarter in that area. Obviously, you guys have been a bit banged up in the defensive backfield the last few weeks. I was just curious if you feel you're at this point if you feel like you're getting any of those guys back this week. Still too early. You know, we're not out practicing today. We'll kind of find out as the week goes on. You know, kind of how some of those guys guys respond. But I will say this: I was very proud of uh, Deshaun Gaddy. I thought he played. <laughs> Really well, being out of position, Sean Faulkner did a lot of good things at safety, having moved from, um, you know, kind of more of a backer position, um, you know, got caught with one play uh, there on a, on a crucial fourth down and long um, that the, on the scramble. You know, he's so used to having his eyes in the backfield in those moments, um, chasing a quarterback that, um, you know, we, we got caught in a scramble and let a receiver go. But overall and all, I thought uh, those guys from making a transition from backer to safety and one safety to corner, uh, I thought they did some really good things. Um, you know, Katie Davis had a, uh, an awesome game. I think he had 18 tackles. Deion Noville, uh was unbelievable up front. Um, I think he had seven tackles, two tackles for loss, uh, forced fumble, um, and a number of guys. I thought, uh, again, a number of guys played hard and, and uh, uh, did a good job. So overall, please, we just got to grow on it. You talked about a lot of those tackles. Um, looking at the stats, it was a little bit interesting because a lot of them, it seemed like were more combined stuff. Not a lot of guys had solo tackles. I was just curious if you felt like it was a real good team effort as far as tackling. I thought it was. I thought they're flying to the ball, um, you know, which again, you're going to play in games like that. Uh, you know, they play big sets, and run runs downhill, and, uh, you know, you're, you're, it's going to be a physical game. And, uh, our guys did a good job of getting to the ball, um, gang tackling. Um, and I think a lot of it, too, is just understanding your assignment, um, what your job is, what your fit is. Um, and it's not always your play to make. It's, it's your job to fit it and turn it back somewhere as well. So uh, I thought the, the discipline within the defense, the integrity of the defense, they did a nice job executing that. Um, 
which I think is key. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I think uh, on both sides of the ball, I thought a uh, guy stepped up, you know, uh, and on special teams, Ethan, you know, making those kicks, uh, all the extra points and, and a field goal. And, um, you know, there was some, uh, uh, we did some good things in special teams. But, yeah, I think guys stepped up. I thought we were much better converting on third downs. We were uh, around 50%, uh, which, is, which is where we want to be um, at least. Uh, defense did a nice job of, uh, you know, they weren't as we, we were pretty good defensively on third downs, getting off the field. Um, I think better in the critical situations. We had one offensive penalty that that cost us four points, which is something that we can't have happen. Uh, we had a long touchdown run right there on, uh, you know, a third down that uh, should have been seven, but um, just a little bit of communication issue right there uh, with our tempo. So. Um, again, just got to eliminate that. We were much better taking care of the football. We had no turnovers, uh, which is a positive, something we've been stressing. Um, so there were a lot of positives in the game. Uh, there's still a lot of things that we got to improve on and get better. Uh, but we just got to continue to build off the, the positives and, and make sure that we correct and continue to correct, uh, you know, some of the things that can get you beat. I thought he managed the game well. Again, uh, with what they're doing, you know, some of the quarterback run game was good. Knew that, uh, you know, uh, very much like he did versus Missouri. Um, so he's starting to get more comfortable. Uh, again, taking care of the football has been key. Offensively, uh, you know, I thought he managed the game well in that sense. Uh, you know, I thought he was, you know, a little more comfortable in the pocket. You know, with his feet, his base, or his feet and his base, um, and his technique. Uh, which is going to help. And so, um, you know, I think overall he's getting a lot more comfortable. And some of that, just new guys coming in and out, I think we're kind of at a point now to where a bunch of those guys have had a ton of reps and we've practiced together long enough to where I think guys are getting comfortable, more comfortable as the season moves on and gaining confidence as it goes. When you talked about some of that improvement on third downs, was there anything that you really felt like you could point at in terms of why you guys were better on third downs? Well, I think one, we caught the football, which is always key. Um, you know, uh, drops will kill you, especially in those situations. Um, caught the ball much better. Um, and again, just executed our routine plays. It's not like, you know, we were doing anything outside of what we normally do. Uh, it's just going out and, uh, you know, making sure that understanding what they're giving you um, as a quarterback, uh, understanding uh, as a receiver where your zones are and, and being able to get open versus man. Um, and then did a nice job for the most part. Again, a couple we'd like to have back, but uh, I thought the execution was just much better overall. You guys are still alive as far as getting to 500 this season. Does that motivate your players as you go forward? Oh, there's no doubt. I, I think that definitely motivates our players, but I, I would think uh, the biggest motivation is understanding how it felt, what it took us to get to that win, and then two, understanding that feeling that you had when you're not. And so you don't want to go back there. And so I think the motivation is, uh, you know, let's make sure we improve this week and get a week better and focus in on this opponent. Um, and then when you look up, you know, we got four opportunities left, one week at a time. And, uh, you know, we'll see kind of where it ends up. But I know our, our guys have, listen, they, they've been a great group to coach. They fight their tails off. They practice well. Um, you know, they're giving great effort. Uh, they stick together. Uh, which is awesome. You know, I think uh, that, that core group of leaders are, it's a great group. And so um, just got to continue to to do that. Well, speaking to your upcoming opponent, just what are you expecting to see out of Southern Miss at this point? Um, I, I think, you know, we're playing at their house. Obviously, they've been in a very similar situation that we've been in. Uh, I know they're, they're playing hard and I think defensively uh, up front, um, you know, they got, they always have, uh, Twitchy, uh, big guys up front that can uh, disrupt the passing game and the run game. Um, you know, and they're playing extremely hard defensively. They're, they got they got deep, uh, speed um, offensively. Obviously, trying to find their way as we have been. Um, you know, and uh, I think you know, obviously, year one in the system, uh, first year as uh, you know, a new head coach, new coaches, uh, just everybody trying to figure out that and. Um, but I do know this, they play extremely hard uh, and, uh, you know, 
they're looking to get a win as well. So I know it's going to be a very competitive game. It always is, uh, especially up at their place. Um, it's not an easy place to play, and and uh, you know it'll be it'll be uh, uh, we're excited about the uh, about the. Uh, chance to go out there and compete. I mean, that's what it's all about. Uh, Southern Miss always has players. Uh, they got a ton of athletes, a ton of good players, and um, there's a reason why uh, traditionally they're one of the better teams in our conference. Got your kicker back last week. And you know, he's been so remarkably consistent for you. Over Who's that? I'm sorry. Your kicker. Oh, Ethan. Yeah, Ethan. Uh, what has he meant to you guys over the course of his career? Not big, you know, and he's had Ups and down as well. Um, he came in his first year, and I thought he had an unbelievable season. And um, you know, had some setbacks last year through through some injuries, and um, you know, and probably didn't go the way he wanted. And now he's bounced back, and uh, he's worked extremely hard in the off season. He's bounced back, and he's done a great job again this year. And so, um, you know, he, anytime you you feel confident, uh, understanding when you get to a certain point in the field, uh, you're going to get points. Is, is it's huge, um, especially for play callers. So it's uh, it's it's nice, you know, having him back. Obviously, uh, haven't been out a, a week ago, uh, but uh, yeah, he's he's done a good job. One guy on Southern Miss I wanted to ask you about was uh, the running back Frank Gore Jr. Yeah. Obviously, seems like he's been a key part of their offense. Just what have you seen out of him on tape? Terrific player. <laughs> uh, I think he's you know he, he has all the, all the weapons. You know he he does a great job in, in his vision uh, and his own running ability. Uh, he's powerful. He can run through you, uh, but also run around you. I mean he's a, he's a very good back. Um, and again he's. He's, uh, you know, obviously one of their their weapons, uh, but they also have others. They also have receivers that can go. Um, they can go get the ball, and uh, they're very explosive. And so, um, you know, again, I think uh, he, he's a terrific player. But I think they also have other weapons that can hurt you as well. So, um, again, we understand the the matchup we face, and uh, got to go out and make sure we focus in on our jobs and what we do well, and make sure we build off that and and uh, get ready to compete. Let me ask you about. Uh brothers. They've been a big part of your tenure. You had, you had the first older one, then you had the younger one. What have they meant to you over the course of this? <laughs> Manasseh, well, Sasai as well. Obviously, both of them played a lot of football here. and uh, Manasseh, he's, uh, he's been unbelievable. You talk about it, probably one of not, uh, he is probably one of the most consistent and the best player we have offensively. Um, you know, week in and week out, he, he's, he's physical. He understands uh, at that position, understands how to get us into certain looks, certain calls. Um, you know, he's kind of the man that makes it all run up front. And uh, um, he's doing a terrific job, you know, and just he, he, he plays the way the game's supposed to be played. He loves ball. Um, he studies it. Uh, there's not a guy on our you know team that watches as much film as that guy does throughout the week and, and prepares himself to, to have that success. And so. Uh, He's been terrific. And those guys just, were those guys just anchors of your line throughout your career? Yeah, I mean, they're, again, they love ball. They're extremely smart, um, tough dudes, very loyal. Uh, it means it, it's very important to them. And, um, you know, it. Uh, uh, their teammates mean a lot to them. I mean, that's just who they are. That's how they're, you know, that's how they're raised. I mean, so um, they do, they, they've been, They've been awesome for this program for a lot of different reasons, obviously as players, but also as uh, as men that step up and are, are good leaders as well. Looking back on it, once you got uh, so Sai was Manasseh was kind of followed followed along there, getting pulled like that. Uh yeah, uh, yeah. Coming out of high school, obviously recruiting Manasseh, and uh, as we were getting through the process, I understood understood his his brother played at a, at a junior college and. And played the center position, which was a position that uh, you know we were trying to recruit and, and find guys. And um, you know, once uh, you know we started getting through the process, it ended up uh, not meaning to at first, to be honest with you, but just so ended up that uh, both of them ended up uh, getting here and, and playing together. Which again, uh, if you know those guys, uh, you know. Pretty much, once you get one, you're probably going to get the other. Uh, they're they're very much like the twins. Um, they were going to go play ball together if they could, and so family's important to them. And uh, again, we're blessed uh, that they were here and, and that they've been here, and, and they've played a huge role in what we do.